Hello and welcome into the Bradley Baseball Show from downtown Peoria, Illinois at Dozer Park alongside Jonathan Michael and Max Kriegshauser. I am Larry Larson. Guys, it's a pleasure to be at Dozer Park and it's starting to feel like baseball lately. Yeah, Larry, I mean, we pulled up to the park and got outside of the car and it was one of the first things we said is just it was just such a beautiful day. And, you know, it's one of those days where you want to get out and do something outside. Obviously, watching a baseball game would be great. There's no game today. But hopefully this weather will keep up for this weekend so that the Braves can have a nice series against the Southern Illinois Salukis here at Dozer Park. I was going to say, we wish we had this kind of weather and <laughs> over the weekend. But still, great time to be a baseball fan. It's right in the middle of everything going on. Got to be loving baseball right now. Of course, and you guys mentioned the weekend. Before we get into the SIU series preview, we got to talk about this weekend. Bradley drops the series to Evansville, two games to one, and it started on Friday with a closely contested matchup. Bradley fell 6-4, to four, though, and they headed into the ninth tied. Bradley handed the ball to their closer, Jonathan, and things went wrong from there. Yeah, the Braves played three really tight games um, in the whole series. You know, they, they couldn't quite get it done. You know, they went into the eighth, um, they, they tied it up. Um, you know, Brennan Doherty, Connor O'Brien had a couple big doubles in that game. But, you know, the Braves starting pitching was really good this week, but the, rel the relief pitching, you know, left a little bit to be de desired. You know, you're gonna have those games where your bullpen is gonna falter a little bit. Um, and unfortunately it happened for the Braves this week. You know, Theo Denlinger is a very, very reliable guy for the most part. So, you know, he's gonna have those games where he might slip up here or there. But, you know, nevertheless, it was so good to see the Braves, like, you know, staying in that game and being competitive. It was a very close game. And, of course, Sunday's games were also very close. But, Max, before we get into Sunday, we had Saturday. It was supposed to be a doubleheader on Saturday, but it rained, rained, rained all day. And it was a waiting game. When you're a player on a team in a Missouri Valley Conference series, high stakes, what does that waiting game do to throw you off your game a little bit? I mean, absolutely. It definitely throws you off your game. I mean, just think about it, just like sitting there and you're ready to play. You want to play, but you're just kind of left, left hanging. And not having that moment definitely kind of threw the Braves off. I also probably threw Evansville off a little bit of their rhythm. But to come back, play the games that they played on Sunday, got to be a good sign for the Braves. Breaking down Sunday's doubleheader, of course, the series was supposed to be originally four games with the doubleheader on Saturday. That doubleheader shifted to Sunday, and Bradley took game one. Max, two words, Dan Bolt. No kidding. It is genuinely difficult to not just spend this whole show gushing about how awesome he is. I mean, we can talk about later how he did not have a hit besides that one game in the series, but that four for five game, I mean, come on. You just, he just absolutely carried this team. You love to see it. And the two home runs, the walk-off home run, one of, if not the best moments for the Braves this season so far. Yeah, certainly. And, and Jonathan Bradley taking that one 5-4 to four game one on su uh, Sunday, thanks to that Dan Bolt walk-off homer. But what else jumped out from you from game one? You know, well, obviously, again, like Max said, Dan Bolt, the four-hit game. Four-hit games multiple times in your Bradley career is a very rare feat. I believe it's only been achieved you know, somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 times. So Dan Bull is really in rare company there, as you know, none of us are really surprised about that. But um, in game three, you know, both teams are quiet at the plate. Um, you know, not, a real, not a lot of runs coming across the plate. Uh, TJ Manteifel had a big home run. He's been stepping up a lot lately. But in the end for the Braves, it, it was just – just mistakes like a wild pitch and a pass ball that's what cost them the game you're gonna have to clean those up and again they lost the game late on Friday due to their bullpen and they lost it again on Sunday with their bullpen as well so again like I said you're gonna have those games but you don't want to have too many of those games and start to see yourself slipping down the Missouri Valley Conference standings as Jonathan mentions Braves losing game two on Sunday game three of the series by a final of four to two and Another aspect to that loss, Max, was 10 runners left on base for Bradley. Definitely. Bradley has not had that much of a problem getting runners on base. Their on-base percentage this year is over 380. The problem has been getting those runners to score, and we definitely saw that come into play in all games this weekend. Um, just something you got to fix going forward. Yeah, certainly. And looking at the series as a whole, guys, Jonathan, you talk about that relief pitching, but the starting pitching looks like they've turned a corner a little bit. And one performance that really jumped out to me this weekend, Jed Moscott on Friday going seven innings, only allowing one earned run. Yeah, Jed Moscott's a player for the Braves. He's a redshirt senior in his final year, and he's had a little bit of an up-and-down year. He's had mostly good outings, you know, a couple of hiccups here or there. 
But in game one, he went for seven innings pitch, gave up five hits, just one run. That's just a real solid line. Once you can get your starters like six, seven innings deep, that's where you can start to win a lot of ball games. And in games two and three as well, Bradley's starters, uh, Matt Hamilton and Brooks Goswine, respectively, both went six innings as well. Hamilton having four strikeouts, three earned runs. Goswine giving up one earned run and uh, having five strikeouts. So having that starting pitching is really nice to see for the Braves. It's been coming around and improving since the start of the season. You know, it's kind of a reverse of where they were earlier because their relief pitching, like you know Theo Denlinger, Taylor Catton, they were pitching great earlier in the season. Now they're kind of starting to falter, but now to compensate for it, the starters are starting to pick it up a little bit. So if the Braves can start to put together a complete rotation and bullpen, they're going to be really dangerous. But it is nice to see the rotation starting to come around. And Max, whenever you talk baseball, you talk to old-fashioned baseball guys, they say pitching and defense wins games. That defense side of the ball was great for Bradley this weekend as well, especially the outfield. No kidding. I mean, genuinely speaking, they did have very, very solid defense. However, they made some crucial errors in that eighth inning and in early in the game. Um, Mostov had a great, great couple games, or a great uh, start, but he did allow those two unearned runs. That's a problem for the defense. In the, in the ninth inning, or the eighth inning, I'm, I'm sorry, in the second game of the doubleheader, wild pitch, pass ball, that's got to be something you got to fix. Overall, though, genuinely good signs from the Braves defense. Just got to limit those high profile chances. Of course. And those two big defensive plays on Sunday, in terms of the positives, you look at Dan Bolt's throw in game one, mm -hmm. and then Carson Huseman's throw in game two. Max, when an outfielder throws home, you get that play at the plate, one of the most exciting plays in baseball, and the defense is able to get the out. What does that do for the team's morale? I mean, you can't have much better morale boosters than that. I mean, you just get those outs of the plate, get those outs in huge situations, especially in close games like this. It does everything for your team, everything. You know, moving on from this Evansville series, looking at who's hot, who's not in this Bradley order, starting with who's hot, Brendan Dockerty on a six-game hit streak and over that six-game hit streak, hitting 357, four RBIs, and Jonathan, He's a player who hits higher in the order for Bradley, ahead of guys like Connor O'Brien and Dan Bolt that we've talked about so much. How important is Brendan Dockerty, and what does it do for the team when he's hot? Well, Dockerty's been he's been batting the leadoff and in, in the second spot this year. Um, mostly, he's been batting leadoff the last couple of games actually in place of Ryan Vogel. But as one of the seniors on the team, Dockerty is. He's a leader, and he knows what it takes for this Bradley lineup. And to bat in front of guys like Connor O'Brien and Dan Bull, the two, obviously the best players in the bat in the Bradley lineup, at least on a consistent basis, it's it's a, it's a tall task, and that's something that you want to put you want to assign to a senior is you want because they know that that they know the situation that, and they know to get on base. So Brendan Dockery understands that he's been very consistent. Nothing really jumps out at you a lot, you know, but he's been very consistent. This year, and you know, he's been playing really good the last couple of games. Um, I expect to see a lot from Dockerty at third base coming up in the series against SIU. Some more stats from Brendan Dockerty. I mean, going back nine games, he's had an it, hit in eight of his last nine games, also hitting 314 over that stretch with a couple RBIs, and over that stretch, no errors. I mean, you really cannot ask for much more than that. Every side of the ball, he's doing really, really special things for the Braves right now. That's what you'd expect from the senior who started 182 consecutive games in the lineup for Elvis Dominguez. On the flip side of things, who's not hot? It's Ryan Vogel, who is looking at his recent stats, 0 for his last 24. Jonathan, and I, we were talking before the pregame show, 3 for his last 42 or something like that. The freshman started hot, but he's cooled down recently. Yeah, and Coach Elvis Dominguez, I've talked with him multiple times this year, and he says that, you know, these freshmen and sophomores, Ryan Vogel is technically a freshman. He, we call him a COVID freshman as uh, he got an extra year of eligibility due to COVID being canceled the season last year. But, you know, Vogel is still someone who's still acclimating to the college level, believe it or not. He was very hot to start the season, and, yeah, he is three for his last 43. So not what you want to see from the guy in the top spot of your lineup. He's been since demoted down to the eighth spot in the lineup. But he is still playing. He is still contributing. And, you know, Ryan Vogel can contribute to the lineup in many ways. He's very fast. He can get a lot of bunt singles. You know, Elvis Dominguez and the Braves, they love to play small ball. They aren't afraid to bunt. 
Ryan Vogel is very good defensively in center field as well. So even if you can't like find your hitting stroke, if you're in a slump, Ryan Vogel is still finding ways to impact the Braves lineup and still stay um, and find some playing time. Yeah, and Max, to touch a little bit on vocal slump, when you're in that position, what do you got to do to snap out of it? I mean, he's doing some right things. Like, genuinely, on the, fri or on the Friday game, he had that bunt for an RBI. Little victories like that are crucial for your morale because, at the end of the day, hitting is very, very much a mental game. And so doing little things like that, it's good. And also it helps to just have your confidence elsewhere on the field. And he does not have an error in center field this year. That is huge. So getting your victories where you can, eventually you will come out of this slump. As Yogi Berra said, 90% of baseball is mental and the other half is physical. Mm -hmm. Speaking of somebody who is hot for Bradley, we've talked about him earlier. It's Dan Bolt, Brock Stotler, and Ben Line Newman talk a little bit more about the MVC's preseason player of the year. Guys? Thanks, Larry. Welcome to Brock and Ben's Hot Corner. I'm Ben Line Newman along with my co-host Brock Stotler. Here we were talking about Bradley University baseball and some hot takes within it. So Brock, this week uh, Bradley lost a lost one to three against Evansville, but one player that did play very well was Dan Bolt for Bradley, the out, senior outfielder. Tell me more about why he makes such a big impact on Bradley's team. Yeah, you know, Dan Bolt was the 2021 preseason MV MVC player of the year, so, you know, obviously well recognized as one of the best players in the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, you know, his impact is really felt up and down this lineup. He doesn't do one thing well. You know, he's got a in conference play this year with the seven games, through, or through seven games, he's got a 478 batting average with a 783 slugging percentage and a 600 on base percentage. So he's really doing a good job of getting on base, hitting the ball for power. He scored nine runs, drove in six runs, hit two, of the, uh, two, hit two home runs already. So he's really off to a hot start in conference play. You know, really look for him to continue to carry this Bradley offense. Absolutely. And overall on the season, Dan Bull average, averaging a 378 batting average. Uh, second in a bunch of hitting stats, only second to Connor O'Brien, but leads the team in home runs with seven, which is tied for fifth in the entire Missouri Valley Conference. Now, Brock, Bradley plays uh, Southern Illinois uh, this weekend. Walk me through what Bradley needs to do to be successful in this series. Yeah, so when you look at this uh, SIU team, you know, you're going to talk about here in a little bit that they're one of the best hitting teams in the Valley, but I want to take a look at the pitching and the fielding for uh, SIU. It all starts with defense, and for SIU, their defense has been a little bit sloppy this year. They do have 33 errors, which is good for second in the Missouri Valley Conference. They also are second with 113 walks, so that's really going to really, they really allow traffic on base. If Bradley can take advantage of that, this next stat's going to be very important. They give up 51 doubles and 25 home runs, so they're giving up extra base hits, and they're allowing the bat to get on, or the barrel to get on the ball, and they're, a lot of those balls are leaving the yard, so if Bradley can get traffic on base and put pressure on those Evansville or on those SIU pitchers, excuse me. I really think Bradley can have some success this weekend. Absolutely, as you said, SIU struggling in pitching and feeling a little bit. Obviously, Bradley will have to come up against uh, Ben Chapman. Chapman, one of the best pitchers in the Missouri Valley Conference, with one of the best ERAs. But other than that, they've been struggling on pitching. And but what they do do well at is batting. Of course, uh, they are one of the best batting teams in the Missouri Valley Conference. Some of the best numbers we've seen in a while. You know. Uh, team average of 3 uh, 325 batting average 273 runs 51 home runs uh, as well as 43 stolen bases also lead the MVC in on base percentage doubles and triples a team that can really score um, in bulk yeah when you're looking at a Bradley pitching staff who you know against Evansville you know they sh they showed some signs you know Brooks Goswan had a very good start um, in that double header uh, very encouraging for Bradley but you know I think the big thing for them is if they can they can they got to keep their control as an issue if they they cannot allow this SIU team to bat with runners in scoring position and with no outs or one out in the inning they have to have favorable fa build favorable counts against these hitters and keep them off balance because if they're letting SIU get into hitters counts with runners on base. I think this could be a very long weekend for this Bradley pitching staff. Absolutely. I think Bradley really needs to limit their errors and if they can get the bats going, I think it can be a very high scoring game and a very competitive series for the Braves. Well, that's all we have today for the Brock and Ben, Ben's hot corner. I'm Ben Line Newman alongside Brock Stotler. Back to you, Larry.
Thanks for that, guys. Dan Bolt, certainly an instrumental piece, needless to say, for this Bradley team. And going into this SIU series, he's going to have to be big with the rest of the lineup. And guys, looking at the Salukis, they have had a very, very impressive season near the top of the MVC, making noise nationally. In fact, last week I talked to Evansville head coach Wes Carroll, and he said when they played them in mid-March, it felt like they were playing the 27 Yankees. They have been that good, Max, and I know you've got some stats to back that up. I know. Seven of their eight regular players have an OPS north of 900. That is simply ridiculous. I mean, we've talked a lot about how the starting pitching for the Braves this season has been or has improved over the last series. We saw some really, really positive signs. They're going to need a lot more to get past this Saluki lineup. It is going to be a genuine test. Yes, and some players that jump out of that lineup, you've got the MVC Player of the Week, Philip Archer slugging over 500, a number of guys slugging over 500 in that lineup. And, you know, Jonathan, looking at the SIU offense, you know, they lead the nation. Runs scored, slugging percentage up there in average in home runs. Going to specifics, what does Bradley's pitching have to do? Well, you can't let them get on base. You know, you can't have those errors. You can't give up unforced walks. You know, obviously you're going to have a couple of them, but you don't want to, you know, start to get a little – too loose and you know start missing the zone too much and you know and then Bradley had a couple wild pitches in this past series they've uh, they've had 25 this year as opposed to their opponents 13. Now while wild pitches may not decide a ball game if you had a couple runners in scoring position and you toss a wild pitch so to say that's a free run that you give to the to the other team and then SIU you know if they have runners on second and third they move the other guy up sack fly and then there's two runs and you know it's you can't really make any mistakes. They don't have a lot of room for error. And like you said, Larry, it's it's just murderer's row for the for the SIU Salukis. You know, they have Philip Archer, you know, Tristan Peters, JT Weber, Vinny Masaggio. There's some other players in the SIU lineup that have put up great numbers this year. I know they have two 10 home run hitters. One has 10, one has 11. So they hit the long ball a lot. The Braves are gonna have to hope for maybe a, maybe a little win coming out of here in center field in Dozer Park to uh, maybe knock that ball down, so to say. But they're going to need a real complete effort, like I said earlier, from their rotation and their bullpen. No one can really slip up for the Braves if they want to take a game or two from the Salukis. Max, let's talk about implications here. Bradley tied for sixth in the MVC. SIU not really towards the top, kind of hanging around the middle. They haven't played an MVC series over the last week, they took three games over the weekend, one against Bellarmine, two against NIU. But what does this series mean for the Braves? I mean, it's huge. Bradley Sir currently sits one game below 500 in the MVC standings. You take three or four, you're all of a sudden a game over 500. And you, the way that everything is so tightly packed in the middle right now, you could easily see the Braves jump from like sixth to second in the, in the league. This is an incredibly important series. This will be a tone setter for the rest of the season. It certainly is, and guys, to wrap it up, picks to click. Who is going to be a player to watch for Bradley if they're going to win this series, Jonathan? Well, mine has got to be Connor O'Brien. You know, we talk so much about Dan Bolt, but what would a lightning bolt be without its thunder? And for that, the Braves, that thunder is Connor O'Brien. He's been really hot lately, and, you know, everyone that knows Bradley baseball knows about Dan Bolt. You know, Connor O'Brien is one person that, you know, may not jump off the page to some people, but, you know, he's going to have to get on base, you know, for Dan Bolt and set the table, him and Brennan Dockerty. And, you know, if he can get on base, you know, with a couple doubles, you know, a single get on base, and the Braves can keep it rolling, you know, the Braves don't have to hit a bunch of home runs to beat the Salukis. If they just keep getting a couple base hits, move the guys around the diamond, they might end up, you know, sneaking by the Salukis and having a big inning. So Connor O'Brien is going to be huge for the Braves. He has been pretty hot lately. Um, he has a lot of multi-hit games. He's a little bit streaky, but when he's on, he's very on. So I really think that O'Brien will be key for the Braves this weekend against Southern. No question. Connor O'Brien, to your point, is hitting 523 over his last six games. That's going to be very, very important. But I would actually look to Eli Rawlinson. He has had a bit of a rough season. He's only hitting 222. But he is over a 162 game season on a 30 homer pace. And in 2019, the last time the uh, Braves played the Salukis, in four games, he hit 364 with six RBIs in those four games. It'd be an interesting thing to see Rawlinson pick it up over a team that he has hit really well against in the past. Two guys who bat behind Dan Bolt in the order, so that really helps. You know, the SIU can't just put Dan Bolt on first base and 
pitch around anybody else in the order when you've got Connor O'Brien and Eli Rollinson hot. It makes their job a lot tougher. Guys, I'm going to go to the pitching side. I've got Jed Moscott coming off that seven-inning start. If he can come out on Friday, stepping up for the injured Dalton Mall and have another good start, that really sets the tone. And if Bradley can hand their bullpen the lead, I really like their chances. That about wraps it up for this first edition of the Bradley Baseball pregame show. So for Max Griegshauser, Jonathan Michael, and Tim Rushi behind the camera, I'm Larry Larson. Shout out to the Peoria Chiefs for letting us come down here and tape our pregame show. Thank you to them, and thank, t thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.